Tell your neighbor, God has something. Say, God has something to give to me. Hallelujah. My topic this morning will say, Faith in the face of fear. Faith in the face of fear. You see, uh, we, we, we are in a time that the devil will like to do all his worst. And what's the essence of doing all his worst? Number one, the devil wants to make sure that he deprives a lot of people from entering into the kingdom of God. The devil also wants to populate hell. And the devil also wants to discourage a lot of believers. You see, uh, we, we, we are facing a uh, political crisis. We are facing uh, natural disasters. We are facing uh, hunger. We are facing insecurity. We are facing a lot of things in the world today. But this thing that Jesus said to the disciples when he was leaving the world is a very vital message that we all the believers must have this in our heart. Why do we have to have this in our heart? We must fill ourselves and guide ourselves with the words that Jesus has spoken to us before he left the world. Not only that, the scripture is always ready to uh, 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 guide us and also make us as believers, as people of God, to stand firm and not waver here and there because definitely we are in the last day. The last day for human thinking, you may be saying, oh, the last day doesn't mean that the world is going to end in maybe in two years to come or in three years or in five years or in 20 years. No, it is not by the day the world is going to end that matters. What matters is the event that is unfolding in the world today. You see, we are in Nigeria. Thanks and glory be to God that we are in, uh, in the part of Nigeria where it seems as if nothing is happening. But for you to know, Things are happening all over the nation. People are running elter scatter. What has not been happening before is happening today. And not only that, we are just talking about the coronavirus and all that we have come out of and all the ravaging problems that have faced us and we are talking about how we can recruit our life. Insecurity now struck. We are talking about hunger. We are talking about so many things and yet the worst is happening. Praise the Lord. When Jesus was talking in the book of Matthew, he said, when you begin to hear rumors of war, when you begin to see some things happen in pestilence, when you begin to see troubles here and there and so many things that he talk about, he begin to talk about things that will happen. He said, when you begin to see all of those things, you should know that the end is what? Near. Now, too many people are already carrying this as a load. And if you want to look at how, what is happening in the world, you look at the other countries like the United States of America, you see what is happening over there right now. The, store, the, 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 the snow, the snow that is falling and the power outbreak. You see where the, 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 the electricity or whatever is not functioning, they have a problem. And people are in their houses indoors. You look at other countries, you see where people are on lockdown. You see so many things happening in the world. All of these things that are happening in the world is the sign of the end time. The sign of the end of the world. But as a believer, God has made it very clear to us our stand and where we must stand. And what God has made clear to us is what we are all going to capitalize on and stand to overcome this world because we are the children of God. And we must always behave as the children of God. And this is why we must have faith in the face of fear. Fear all over the place. What the world is waiting for and what is happening in the world today is that the devil, the Antichrist, is planning to come out of his shell. The Antichrist is planning to come out of his shell. As the Antichrist is busy planning to come out, we the believers, we the people of God must also plan and stand firm and wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must not give up and we must not be afraid and we must not look at where things are happening and begin to fall out of faith. You say on the last day, many things will happen. Many things will happen. You will see trouble here and there. You will see a lot of things. You will see uh, uh, hunger. You will see uh, uh, many, many things happening. So we are going to be strong because we know there is a place that God has prepared for us. That is something that God asks for his children. 
Sometimes you see some believers will be thinking, ah, this is heaven self. Am I sure I'm going to be there? Am I sure I'm going to make heaven? Am I sure I'm going to this? It's not something that should worry you. What you need is faith. And I want to tell you that your faith is what God will look at. And God will say, you merit the kingdom of God. That's what God will look at. He say, oh, since you believe in me, since you are not uh, afraid, you do not allow the fear and all the terrors to divert your faith from me. My kingdom is for you. And Jesus said he will welcome us into his kingdom in the name of Jesus. If you go to the book of, uh, the, the book of John, can we all turn our Bible to the book of John 14? When Jesus began to address the believers, when he began to address his disciples, when he began to talk to them in the midst and in the face of fear, when Jesus began to address the believers, when Jesus spoke to them the way he talked to them, you go to the book of John, the gospel of John chapter 14, you see from verse 1, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, and believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Praise God. Praise God. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God and also believe in me. In my father's house are many mansions. I am going to prepare that place for you. And after I have prepared the place, I am coming back again to take you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. This is a promise that Jesus has given to all the believers. This is a promise that we must all remember in our lives. This is a promise that should give us comfort. This is a promise from our master that must give us the confidence. This is a promise that we must all watch out for and not be tossed up and down by the winds of trouble upon the face of the earth. Some people will say, well, we are not talking about the coming of Jesus. We know that Jesus will come, but what about this, my present condition? What about these problems? What about this war? What about this thing I'm facing? The book of Joshua. You can see Joshua chapter 1. Can we all turn our Bibles to Joshua chapter 1? I want to show you something. The book of Joshua. Joshua, quickly open your Bible. God has something for you. And what God has for you will not pass you by. Can I hear somebody say better amen? Your life will remain a miracle all the days of your life. And nothing shall be stolen from you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, have, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. He said, have I not commanded you? God said, he has commanded you to be strong and be firm in your faith and not worry here and there, oh, thinking, you know, oh, what am I going to do? The problem is too much. Oh, I don't know what is happening in Nigeria, what is happening in America, what is happening here and there. No matter what is happening, anything happening in the world will always continue to happen. And there is nothing you want to do about it that will stop it. But one thing you must know is that what you believe in is what will work for you. Hallelujah. The economic crisis, the political crisis, the disturbances here and there, the rumors of war and everything happening, one thing you must know is that these things will continue to happen. But as they are happening, be secured within yourself. Be what? Be secured within yourself. The security within yourself is the most important. And what is the security within yourself? The security of our Lord Jesus Christ. That what God has said to us, to be strong and not to waver, to be strong and not to be afraid, to be strong and not to be with dismayed. This is the word of God that God has spoken to us. And we must all stand with the word. We must all have confidence in the word. We must all be fame and not be looking back. We must all be fame and keep moving. Business moving, business is not moving. Uh, things are working, things are not working. Do not let anything to debar you from the faith you have in Christ Jesus. 
And the Bible said, this is the faith that overcometh the world. This is what overcometh the world. In illustration, what overcometh the world is that we believe in Jesus. Is that we have our faith in Christ. Sickness is not the problem that should destroy your faith. No matter the sickness, you are going to come out of it. Praise the Lord. Bad market, money nowhere, money is not there, money is not here. Money should not be the one or what will depart your faith. Can you quickly go straight to Matthew? Because I want you to know that everything we are studying today, God is involved. Tell your neighbor, God is involved. Say, God is involved. God is involved. Oh my God. <laughs> I, when I say God is involved, some people will be thinking, oh, some people will be worrying, oh, uh, when you say God is involved, what's the meaning of God being involved? God is involved in every ramification. Matthew chapter 6, look at verse 25. Look at verse 25. Verse 25, he said, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what, shall ye, what ye shall put on, is not life more than meat? This is a question from God. And the body than remnant. Verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barn. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Hallelujah. I say praise God. Hallelujah. He said, therefore take no thought. I said, he said, therefore I say unto you, take no thought. And what is the thought? Oh, I don't have money. The way the economy is going, I am broke. The way the job, I lost my job. And uh, this, that, that, this and that and that and that. All of these things are the load that people are carrying on their head. And I want to tell you something. The reason why thousands of people are getting sick and dying and are being troubled on a daily basis is because of the thoughts because of the hypertension that has come upon them as a result of what and what they are being worried about. After all, development came and met, or it was development that scattered all these things. Development came and turned everything upside down. And so if development is crashing down, we know that our heaven is already secured for us. Praise the Lord. Some people also have money. There's money in their pocket. But their, their condition of what they, they thought of uh, the life and what things, things happening has also become another heavy load on them. But God said, in the face of fear, be strong and stand firm, knowing that whatever is happening is not happening to destroy you. Praise the Lord. Whatever is happening is not happening to destroy you. And the Bible said, do not be afraid of that person that will destroy your body are not able to destroy your soul and your spirit. The person that will destroy your body can only come and torment your body and cause all kind of mayhem on your body. But your spirit, your soul, as long as your soul is saved, you are saved forever. Lay your hand on your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I rededicate myself. I rededicate myself. I rededicate myself to you, O God, that you may renew my spirit renew my soul and my body in the midst of fear in the face of fear in the time of fear lord replace it with faith in my heart give me the grace to serve you in spirit and in truth father do not allow me to be tossed up and down by the waves of the happenings by the fear on the face of the earth oh lord let the assurance of my salvation be continually ringing in my heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So Jesus said, do not let the thought of what you are going to eat, what you are going to put on, oh, where you are going to sleep, the house rent, the school fees, the uh, business, uh, job, whatever and whatever that is happening, do not let these ones and these things weigh you down. But be strong. Be courageous. Have all the, the, the boldness. For Christ has not given us the spirit of fear. 
but of love, of power and sound mind for us to move on, for us to overcome, for us to conquer, for us to continue to move forward. I want to let you know that if a government comes into power and they are not ready to do the right thing, definitely one day their tenor will expire. Eh? And when their tenor expire, what happens? They must surely go. Eh? They will surely what? They will go. We have, we, have, we, have, we have seen people that have been on the seat of power for many years, for decades. They've been on the seat of power and they, they be like terror to some people. Even though they may not be terror, but they have been there and some people have been worrying about their being on the seat. Yet, one day, they were removed or they left the seat. We have also seen people that, has, uh, that, uh, that, has, uh, that have become a conqueror. They conquered nations and took over power. And they stayed in power for many, many years. Yet, they did not stay there forever. The only person that stays forever is Jesus Christ. Can you clap for him? Can you clap that and do it well for Jesus? Hallelujah! I said hallelujah! Verse 34 of Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. He said, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Take no thought for tomorrow. You see, I, I tell a lot of people, I say, if you want to be strong, you'll be strong. If you want to be healthy, you'll be healthy. If you want to have what is called normal body system, maybe uh, you are suffering big high blood pressure. If you want to let your high blood pressure go, you can make it go. You have excess sugar in your blood vessel. If you want to make it go, you can make it go. Praise God. Because the Bible says that there's no a problem that comes to a man that is such a problem that the man cannot overcome. There's nothing that can come to a man that a man cannot overcome. Because before those things come, God has already made a way of escape. That definitely you will surely overcome that problem or that situation. Hallelujah. So when you know that whatever coming to you, God has made a way of escape, then you must know that you are the one to explore the way of escape and escape. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me now? So you are the person to make yourself holy, make yourself fame, make yourself strong, make yourself overcome, make yourself be relevant, and make yourself to stand fame in every situation. But if you are carried away by tomorrow, oh, I don't know tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm worried. I'm worried. You get worried. Your head will be filled up with a lot of thought. Because even the level you are now, there are people aspiring to be there. Hello? That level you are, that you look at yourself. Oh, look at me. Look at where I am. Look at my situation. There are people that are praying and aspiring to get to that level you are. Some people say, oh, this sickness is, the, the, the problem is too much. This sickness is, is incredible. No way. There are people that are even saying, let them have mouth to even talk or speak. You are still speaking. You are still breathing. Some people are saying, oh, the way I am and what is happening to me, I don't know. Some people are praying to get to the level you are. Eh? To get to that situation, the level of your situation, people are praying to come out of where they are already to that place. What about people that are already locked up in hell? When Jesus came to preach the gospel, he got to a point and Jesus discovered that there are thousands of people that are locked up in hell as a result of fear. Because fear can send you to early grave. Fear is the reason why people have left, left their glory and they ran away. Fear is what has made people not to fulfill their destiny. Fear is the reason why many people are not fulfilled today. You are afraid to succeed. You are afraid to make it. You are afraid to move forward. You are afraid to advance. And this is what made the Israelites to say to God, is there no grave in Egypt that we all come here to die? They said, Moses, we are here to die. Where is the grave that we should be buried? Now you brought us this far for us to die 
and be buried. You better take us back to Egypt. Let's go back to Egypt and we can eat onions, we can eat cucumber, we can eat a carrot, and we can worship the gods of the Egyptians. We don't know why you are taking us to go and worship the true God. Look at what is happening here. Look at our situation. We don't know where to come out. Look at us. We are in trouble. Save us now. It better we go back now. Because of fear. But glory be to God that Moses was a servant of God that already understand that the things they face on daily basis is to make them strong. What you face in your life and what comes on your way is something to make you strong. You know, the, the problem in this our country, Nigeria, is because Nigeria as a country don't explore what they have. The only thing they know how to explore is crude oil. Eh? And maybe gold in Zamfara. If Nigeria know how to explore what they have, God has already given them ways to solve all these problems that is destroying the world, destroying the nation. But they don't know. They don't care about how to explore it. They don't care about how to make use of those things. And that is why Nigeria as a country is still facing what they are facing. But I pray for you, you as individual, God will give you the grace. I say God will give you the grace. God will give you the grace and you will surely overcome. I see you overcome in the name of Jesus. You will surely overcome in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so the Egyptian, the Israelites, we are so afraid because of fear, they want to return back to the land of captivity. Because of fear, they want to remain in chain. They want to remain under bondage. But when Moses said, do not look back, you see that Egyptians are seen. Those things you are seeing, this fear, this fear that has come over you people. You see this Red Sea that has made you people to be afraid and want to deny your God right here before the Red Sea. I want to let you know that Egyptians you see today, you shall surely see them no more. You will see them no more. For you will surely overcome it in the name of Jesus. And they asked of the Lord, what shall I do? And God said, this is what to do. Let them move on. And definitely God took them and crossed the Red Sea. Now look at the Red Sea and look at the people. If it were you, and the God says maybe whatever you decide is what will happen instantly. You see, the people would have gone back and the people would have lost that opportunity. The things happening are happening to make you strong. Tell your neighbor, I must be strong. Say, I must be strong. I must overcome. I must move forward. Because all that you are seeing, they are all coming to make you strong. And you must be strong. Can I hear better amen there? Your amen should be louder. That is why I say, do not take thought for tomorrow. What you shall put on, what you shall eat, and what you shall drink. For tomorrow, we think of itself. You don't have a job, God is bringing a job for you. You don't, your business is not moving, God is going to cause your business to move. You don't have your document, God is bringing document to you. Anything that it is you don't have, just be faithful with God, have faith with God, be confident in your God, you will surely have them. I say you will surely have them. You will surely have them in the name of Jesus. Can I hear a better amen? Hallelujah. Can I hear a better amen? Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. And I need, I, need to, I need to carry you with the word so that you will, you will be faith and you understand how these things work. What did he say? Isaiah 43, verse 1. He said, But now, thus says the Lord that created thee, O David, and he that formed thee, O possibility. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Praise God. He said, Fear not. I have what? Redeemed the tea. Amen. Amen. Who is speaking here? Huh? This is Christ, God, speaking to his people. This is God Almighty talking to his children. He said, They shall fear not. He is with them, He is their God. 
He has redeemed them. He has called them to himself. He mentioned their name by himself. And he said, you are mine. Then if we read down, look at what he said in verse 2. Look at what he said in verse 2. What he said in verse 2 may be the kind of things we all are facing today. He said, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And thou passest through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Hallelujah. This is the word of God and it remains undiluted. This is the word of God and it remains the truth. This is the word of God and it remains the surest word. The word that you need for your victory. The word that you need to overcome. The word that you need to conquer. The word that you need to advance. The word that you need to move forward. So, in the face of fear, whatever the landlord is saying, whatever other tenants are saying to you, whatever the neighbors in the place of business are saying, whatever they are doing to you, anything happening around you, the Nigeria in crisis, the government or whatever, the policy, the financial, the institutions, the this, the that, whatever is happening, the, the snow or whatever, the winter or whatever it may be, hammer time, rainy season, flood, storm, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, um, climate change or whatever it may be, let not your heart be what? Be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Anything happening has expiring date. And when the expiring date comes, all those things will expire and they will pass away. I said they will pass away. They will pass away. With all of these things, these are the things that when the real people that understand their God and knows the God they serve, when they see all of these things happening, what would they do? They will now watch the event and they will say no. They go back and make a positive confession. Hallelujah. Positive confession is very important at this time. Amen. What did I say? Positive confession is very important. If you say, I'm dying, oh, I'm dying, oh, I want to die, oh, the problem is too much, oh, I cannot bear it anymore, oh, the, 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 this thing is much, then da, da, da. Then the dying spirit will be, begin to haunt the person and told the person, oh, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Amen. Then if you say, oh, I am broke the way it is now, I don't even have shishi. I don't know what to do again. No cover, no penny, no cent. The way it's going now, I don't think I can even survive till next week. I don't think I can survive till next tomorrow. Are you surviving by the money? Or you are surviving by your God? This is what Jesus said. Man shall not live by bread eh? alone because Jesus had situations, had problems, had challenges, had this kind of things happening to him. At a point Jesus was faced with the last option. And what's the option? Eat the stone and live or die of hunger. Praise God. Eat the stone and live or do what? Die of hunger. And the stone that was presented to him happened to be the stone that the builders have rejected that will later become the chief corner stone. And that has to do with his destiny because the devil will always prize your soul at the point of frustration. At the point of fear, at the point of scarcity, at the point of all this trouble, the devil will try everything possible to prize your soul because he knows that when he succeeds in getting your soul, that is all. He said to Jesus, remember you are the son of God. Remember you are the one that has come to save the world. Is it better for you to save the world and die of hunger? Or to just convert the stone to become bread and you just eat it and be alive? Which one is better for you? Hallelujah. And at that point, Jesus was so hungry and the hunger was such a hunger that two things are involved. Number one, the hunger to do the will of God. And number two, the hunger to do the will of Satan, which was the offer of the bread. Praise the Lord. 
There are people that the devil is bringing options to you. And those options the devil is bringing is to make sure he's cut away the real thing. Because there are real things that God has brought us to the world to accomplish. And the devil wants to scuttle it by all means. Maybe you don't know who the devil is. Some of you may be thinking, oh devil, they have been saying Satan, devil. Satan, devil was the fallen angel from heaven. It was the rebellious spirit that said, I want to exalt my throne. I want to be like the most high God. I want people to worship me. I want to have my own empire. I want to have my own, everything my own, selfishness. And the Bible said pride was found in him in heaven. And God said, you cannot stay in this kingdom with me. And God cast him out. God cast him out. He said, I'm not going to, I will fight you with everything. I will fight you with my last blood. I will fight you. And he began to fight in heaven to extend that one third of the angels in heaven followed him. He took the prince Michael and the rebuking of the devil when he came to him, he said, the Lord rebuke you. That was how he was able to be cast out of heaven. So when you see people rebelling, when you see this happening, you should be aware that it's what is called rebellion spirit from the Satan. Hallelujah. And then he prized the destiny of Jesus. He prized the glory of Jesus. He was prizing it and prizing it and saying to him, you better make this impossible. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Because there are only three ways the devil comes to a man. Three methods of the devil that you can never ever, not, not, there's no way else that the devil can use rather than these three methods. He want to come to you with the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and pride of life. These are the methods that the devil wants to apply. And when it comes to apply this method, you are not wise, you are not spiritual, you will see that he's targeting that to scuttle away the power, the grace, the anointing, the favor. He wants to scuttle it away from you. But I pray for you that the devil will not succeed. I say, I pray for you, the devil will not succeed. I pray for you, the enemy will not succeed. The devil will never ever succeed. That's why he said, when you pass through the water, the river will never overflow you. Have this in your mind and be firm and stand firm and stand strong as a believer. Because we are not going to raise people that when any storm comes, they are fizzled away. This is why Jesus was teaching us about the kingdom of God. This is why Jesus was teaching us about the word of God we are hearing on this daily basis. He said the word of God we are hearing is like a man that heard the word and go and build his house on a solid rock. That is the wise man. He built his house on the solid rock because he heard the word of God and make use of it. He said when the storm arose, the wind blow and the rain fall and there was erosion. He said the house was found standing firm and firm and strong because it was built on solid rock. But the foolish, that said, what am I doing with the word of God? I beg, I don't want to obey. I don't tire to the obey. I don't tire to the hear the word of God. He said every day, what is this world going to do for me? He said that person is a foolish person. He's a person that hear the word of God and it's like a foolish man that built his house on erosion, sandy soil, where the erosion passes and when the rain fall, when the wind blow, when the storm arose, the house will collapse. And he said, the fall of that house will be so great. The fall of that house will be so great because it was built by a foolish man. Build your faith on God. Build your faith on Christ. Build your faith on Jesus Christ. Build everything that you have in the strong foundation being God Almighty. Some man, a, 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 a man came to counseling to know the reason why he has fallen in business and why his business is no longer functioning, why everything crumbled, all the millions he had and everything, how all of them just fizzled away because he was thinking in his heart, maybe my brother at home or my uncle or my neighbors or my nephew or those people that hate me, they are the one that has taken away my money. That was what he was thinking until he came for counseling. When he came to counseling, he was sitting before the Lord and the Lord opened the eyes and said, you, you are here for a purpose. You want to know what happened to your money, what happened to your business, what happened to your world. They say, yes, exactly. That is why I'm here. And the Lord said, what happened was what happened when you were starting the business. 
Now you are a believer, you go to church, you are worshipping, you are clapping your hand, you are singing. But remember, the year 1991, when you started the business, after you served your master, your master said to you, through or false? You say, yes. My master said to me, God said, after you have served your master and you want to start your business, you have gotten a place where you want to do your business. Actually, the man was a baker. He had bakery company and things were moving. He was making money. He bought cars, bought many things, bought lands, built house. But something happened. Later on, everything fizzled away and the man became poor. Poor in such a way that the man have to go and fetch water for people to eat. Praise God. I said, praise God. And then the Lord revealed and said, now things has gone down. Why? The man said, that is why I'm here. Because I am praying, I am fasting, I'm looking the face of God, I'm this and that and that. God said, no, you have not done the real thing you're supposed to do. He said, what is it? God said, when you want to start your business, when your master said to you, you went to a native doctor and they gave you something, a tired object with wool, and you went to the place you are doing your business, you dug the ground and you buried it, and you killed animal for it and settled that idol, and you started your business. The man said, true, that is true. That is exactly what happened. God said, what have you done about it all this while? He said, nothing. I gave my life to Christ and I forgot it. And I abandoned that. Because that is what has crippled everything you are doing. Because you did it at the point of beginning of your business. And now that you have given your life to Christ, the first thing you should have done is to go and uproot that. If you cannot see where you buried it to uproot it, you can do special prayers and confess openly, maybe in the church or before your pastor or your prophet, and the prayer should be done to destroy that very thing that was buried. That is what has crippled your business. What am I saying? A lot of people are doing things today. Oh, yes, I want the crowd to be coming. A woman started a restaurant, and every time the woman will go to a native daughter, they will say, go and bring water from the mortuary and use and cook your food. And the woman will go to mortuary and take water and prepare his food. And people are rushing, eating. Another woman like that also will go. They say, go and take your blood of your menstruation to cook. Put it in a bottle every year, every month. Put it in the fridge. Put it in the food you are cooking. And he was using the water from the mortuary to cook food. And people are eating. But the day came, the mortuary attendees that we are always giving out the water came to her and said, Madam, <laughs> your market is now moving where? You are making money. Our money, now 50,000 naira. The woman said, the Chris, I know they pay you. The water where they come carry, I know they pay. He said, you they pay. But if you not settle us, <laughs> we are going to talk. The woman said, oh, yeah, shut up, shut up. Oh, yeah. Take 50,000, you take 50,000. They took it and they went. Another few weeks from that day, they finished the money, they came back. <laughs> Madam, we have come to collect our tithe. The woman said, you the crazy? What is wrong with you people? Not knowing that the people coming to collect money are the dead bodies. Hallelujah, somebody. The people that they washed their body and they gave the water to the woman are the people coming as much as attendee. But the woman never knew because whenever anything is starting, the starting and the building and what you are doing matters a lot because of tomorrow. The wind will fall, the wind will blow, the rain will fall, and the storm will definitely arose. That's why in this ministry, I am so happy and grateful to God and bouncing in the Lord. If I have collected anything to start the ministry, let the wind blow, let the rain fall. I am ready to face the wind and the rain and the blow. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah somebody. Because definitely the rain will fall. Yeah? You know, there are things that are the mistake of a man. Nobody is perfect. You can have some periphery challenges that you are facing or what you are going through. But you see that beginning is he anything that will contaminate that? Yes, instead of God, it was Satan. 
the person is in trouble. Instead of God, Satan, you are in trouble. So let God be all and all and all. He will know, okay, these Israelites, they are crying because of the Red Sea. They are crying because of the challenges. They are crying because of what they are facing. But I know, because of their frustration, I will save them. But if they are worshipping idol in their heart, God said, I will not take it. That's why he said, these people have bowed to other gods. Because they say, bring your earring, bring everything. Let us make ourselves a god that will go before us. That was why they were destroyed. They were not destroyed because they murmured. They were not destroyed because they were crying and facing the Red Sea. They were destroyed because they made another god for themselves. The man said, oh, I don't know. God said, yes, that is what has crippled your business. That was how the whole thing went. So, you must build your faith in Christ Jesus. You must denounce any negative things that has occupied the place of God. You must say no to whatever that is darkness. You must say no to whatever that is unclean. Can I tell you what? Some people will say, oh, yes, because we want this man. This is the person we want. Uh, he's going to give us money. This, that, that, that. And many people will collect money and sell their birthright. Many people will collect money and deny their brothers. Many people will collect money and deny their people and sell the people. But I want to let you know, the money you collect today will not last forever. That's the time to finish. You see what is happening in Nigeria today? Some people are collecting money to keep on allowing people to be dying. People are dying. Things are happening. Some people are playing politics with it. That is the worst thing that can happen to humanity. You play politics with people's life, you have finished yourself. Because you may think, oh, is it not, uh, let me be okay. Uh, as far as I have enough money, I take my children to America. After you, your children, after your children, the children, children, after the children, children, what do you think will be happening? Will you be there at the end of your children, 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 children? Do you know how it's going to be? You don't know. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. So you must, as a child of God, learn how to have what is called positive. Eh? confession in every area, in everything and building your faith strong on the solid rock. This is why a songwriter wrote the song and he said, the rock that never fell, let me hide in you. Let me hide in you. In you there is life. The rock that never fell, oh let me hide in you. Let me hide in you In you there is life The rock that never fell Let me hide in you Let me hide in you In you there is life The rock that never fell Let me hide in you Let me hide in you In you there is life Yakadama Soko Palahazara Oh, the rock that never fell. Oh, let me hide in you. Oh, let me hide in you. In you, there is life. The rock that never fell. I said, let me hide in you. I said, let me hide in you. In you, there is life. Glory to God. Oh, let me add in you. Let me add in you. In you, there is life. Oh, that rock that never fell. Oh, I said, let me add in you. Let me add in you. In you, there is life. The rock that never fell. Let me hide in you. Oh, 
let me hide in you, oh, he who got his life, the rock that never fell, let me hide in you, oh, let me hide in you, he who got his life. Yara ka basole ke rozo robo shata, mara ka boski prahadojo, le kantos ke te ke robo subra hadilaba, rezo prahadojo. Asele mi adi yu, rock of ages. Asele mi adi yu, wo 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 wo. Asele mi adi yu, let me adi yu. In you, there is light, the rock that never fell. Let me hide in you, let me hide in you. In you, there is light, oh, the rock that never fell. Let me hide in you, let me hide in you. In you, there is confession has a lot to do in your marriage, in your childbearing, in your business, in your health, and in everything that you do. You see, let me tell you something. When you do what you're supposed to do, your own part, leave the rest for God and let the will of God be done. So, confront every fear ahead of you, every fear before you, by your faith. And if possible, I want to let you know that is what is called claiming what belongs to you. Turn with me to Psalm. Look at Psalms. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Look at what happened there. I want to let you know that this faith we talk about, nobody is a monopoly of faith. It is something you make on daily basis. It's not something you say, oh, my faith yesterday. Your faith has to be now. Eh? Your faith has to be what? Now, not faith of tomorrow, or faith of yesterday, or faith of uh, when I was little, or when I started business newly, or with this. It has to be now, continuously, in the midst of whatever is happening, your faith has to be now. Look at what happened in the book of uh, uh, this place. Uh, look at Psalm 23. Psalm 23, look at verse 4. Look at verse number 4. He said, yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. Amen. This is David confessing positively. He has met the loom of his life. He has seen dangers. He has seen things that were made to destroy his life. He come across those attacks, those persecutions, and those things that want to deal with him. But what did David do? David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. At that time, David was facing the Goliath in his life, and Goliath can easily destroy his life. He said it, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. At that time, David was in the wilderness. Look at lion, look at bears, look at all that kind of 
white animals coming to destroy the sheep of his father. And David was a young man playing and walking about with the sheep. And you know, animals prefer to eat human beings than to eat their fellow animals. They saw David, David saw them. David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He now go further in saying things that people cannot imagine or believe. He go further and he said, he said, I will fear no evil for God is with me. His rod and staff, they comfort me. When men reject you, always say to yourself, God has received me. When men mock you, say, God has celebrated me. When people are casting you down and looking down on you, say, God is lifting me up and God is lifting me higher, higher. And when people say, this man can never be anything in life, you will say to yourself, God has made me somebody. Eh? You will say it to yourself. You are the one to do it. I'm not the one to do it for you. I will only teach you and you are the one to carry it out. And whenever I teach you and you carry it out, the rest are sure. Everything settles. David is a man that confesses positive. He's not a man that is weighed down by the things he's seeing in his life. Because there are things you see in your life, if you're not careful enough, you'll have heart attack. Your blood pressure will go higher. And when it goes up, 200, 300, the person with that. Praise God. But when you see some things, you will say, even I pass to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. If you look at verse 1, the confession of David in verse 1, made David never to lack or broke in his life. What's the verse 1 say? He said, say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still water. What is the green pasture? God is leading him as a sheep. He will take him to where he will have enough food to eat. And after he has eaten food, he will take him to where he will drink his water. The water will not be the water that is doing. No, it doesn't need him to struggle or to drink dirty things. The water is still, is moving. But he's still, he can easily put his hand and drink and drink without the water getting scattered. Praise the Lord. And you can never address God this way and God disappoint you. God is not a disappointer of those that trust in him. That's why somebody wrote a song and they say, God is able, abundantly able to deliver and to say, our God is able, abundantly able to deliver those who trust in Him.